This is Rick Johnson with Turner Johnson Yachts. Um, we'll, we'll get back into this shortly. Find out. These halyards. This happens to be the main halyard, um, uh, which is kind of usually most often blue. Um, they they put a loop in the end. Okay, this is a this is this is this is a splice, a loop splice at the end. So the, we have a, a convenient way to to tie our our, our feeder line to it and then it's just a matter of we have somebody back here um, helping to feed it through over the it's, it's already lit properly over the, over the uh, sheave here and uh, and I'm going to go down at the other end and pull on the fish tape or the fish line and pull it all through tie it off and we'll start with the other halyards we just finished leading the, the main halyard um, I just tied a stopper knot you can see it loop. Now this one we leave on the back of the mast because that's where it's going to stay. The other halyards will all lead forward of the spreaders because those are going to be your, your halyards that are, going to be, that are going to be used for the jib, the reacher, and the spinnaker. So those will go forward of the mast. So I'm just making this stuff all up, keeping it neat so that when we hoist the mast, it's all out of our way and we can lead it easily then afterwards after we get the mast down and get the shrouds, back stay and head stay connected. Yeah. We're standing next to the mast for the Tartan 3400, well 345 it's called now. Um, what you're looking at here, uh, this hole in the bottom of the mast, coming out of this bottom of the mast, this is what they call a trace line or, or a fish fish line, um, and they use this to lead. This is this is set up so that we can if we have to pull another wire, uh, either up to the top or down from the top. This lets us do that. It goes through the, the there's a conduit going through the mast, so that the halyards and the wires don't commingle. Okay. Um, they come out the, the wires come out here. This will be below the deck level. The, Cabin sole is going to be is going to be right about here. This these uh, wires all come out, and you pull them up through one of the settees, and, and there's all the connection strips are in there. Um, some of them we do we do end to end butt splices, and other ones we crimp on a, a uh, either a fork or, or a ring uh, connector. Makes it easy to disconnect the wires afterwards, and you can see we have a. A selection of them here. These are butt connectors. These are ring connectors, um, and these are these are connectors here that you can you can disconnect. You can you can plug one into the other, so you don't have to you don't need any tools if you if you're going to be taking a mast in and out regularly. Um, this boat's down in, in Naples, Florida. The mast's probably going to stay up for a long time, but nonetheless, getting the wire connections correct is an important part of the job. We also bring an electrical tester, so if we do have a problem, we can track it down. Um, this is the, these are both uh, uh, what you'd call goosenecks. That's the primary one. The boom hangs on that one. This lower one uh, is for the uh, uh, force bar uh, boom vane. It's a, it's a solid vane with, a, with spring loading that will support the weight of the boom and the mainsail. Lower the halyard, so the main the main doesn't drop down. It doesn't just rely on the topping lift to, to keep the boom down, to keep the boom up. This line here uh, is to control the lazy jacks. I can show you that better when the boat's rigged. Uh, the, the lazy jacks control the mainsail as you drop it, so that when it falls into the the uh, uh, pocket boom, um, it's that's it makes it very easy. You don't have to. You don't have to do a lot of handling until you're back at the dock and the boat's stable. Um, if, you, if you look here, you can see under our protective uh, foam here, uh, you see a red trace line, a black, actually this is probably blue, black, and a bright green. And as we come up the mast, I can show you the, 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 business, the business end. Oh, and another green. Uh, this one is uh, this is for the this is for the uh, reacher 
the brighter green would be for for a spinnaker and then one of these is the is the main the other one is the jib mm, nope the jib is the red one main and hmm. oh uh, uh, jib sheet it's it's a little it's a little confusing but I know eventually we get it all sorted out <laughs> Here's your steaming light and a deck light, combination steaming and deck light. Just above that is where this is where we will mount the 24 inch uh, radar display, or radar array. Um, here's the, uh, the radar cable. Uh, again, this is to, these, are, these are the upper uh, lazy jack lines that are adjustable. The other end of the red uh, trace line. This is for the the uh, self tacking jib. This connect. This is where the self tacking jib's uh, head stake attachment is. This is where the uh, upper end of the of the uh, cap shrouds uh, connect. This is the uh, sheave for the reacher. The, the reacher head stake attaches here. And this last bit here, the, the bright green, um, if we, if we, uh, this is where the spinnaker halyard is coming out. And you can see because the spinnaker moves back and forth, they, they put a nice uh, polished uh, bead here so that the halyard, as it's going across, is not going to chafe. Uh, up here, your, your uh, wind instrument for the Raymarine uh, wind display. Um, goes on here. There's a, a, a threaded hole here for the for the wind decks. This is your anchor light. There'll also be a wind decks light. And here's these are the wires that will that we'll use to uh, connect to that, so to illuminate it when you turn on your running lights. I'm just pushing the messenger lines that are going from the top to the bottom of the mast to, to so that we can that we're going to use to run the halyards. Moving those to the aft side of the spar, and now I'm going to feed the second spreader spreader bar up through the bottom. One of them got away. I'm separating. I'm keeping the the lines that I want going behind the spreader bar, getting them there, keeping the the uh, uh, conduit with all the wires for the mast, the, for, the, the, for, for the masthead uh, information. Uh, don't have to worry about the, the, the uh, radar, because that's already below this spreader. But the rest of them are all in that conduit. I want to get that forward so the, so the halyards don't rub against it, don't, don't get tangled up with it. There is a television antenna. Here's the coax for that, and that again will lead down. We'll be hooking all that up uh, after the mast goes up. Um, here's your VHF antenna. It'll flip around and, and, and be pointed up, obviously, um, when uh, before we raise the mast. Um, we put this we put this little cap on there, so somebody doesn't walk into it and stab himself. We're, we're finishing up uh, uh, assembling the furling units. And I want to show you just how, this, how, this, how these uh, links all go together. The extrusions, those are the things that the luff tape actually goes up on the back side of here. The luff tape feeds into a feeder at the bottom and slides up into either one of these slots. Um, this is a, a higher performance furling unit. So if you're, if you're using it as a racer and you wanted to do a, a, a head sail change, you can raise one head sail and then drop the other one. We don't do that so much anymore, but that's what these were designed to be able to do with the twin grooves. Um, anyway, we're using some Space Age adhesives here. This is 3M 5200. Um, it's a very permanent uh, adhesive caulk, if you will. And then we're also using Loctite Red to secure the screws. And again, it's considered a permanent, uh, a, a permanent glue 
to hold the screws in. You don't want the screws backing out. It's not like the mast is going to fall down, but the slide, the swivel, the upper swivel, won't slide back down, so you would not be able to drop the sail if you needed to or wanted to. Okay, um, I've got this already slid in here. I'll, I'll pull it back out so you can see. There's two plastic bits that, that flip together here. This is the aluminum bit that goes, that actually is the strong part. And there we go. And then this piece here directs the 5200, so it goes into these these uh, recesses here, and it glues these this part securely to the extrusions, the, the, the one above and the one below. So, tell me, tell me about the screws. Um, and then just show a screw. Okay. These are the screws that we're using to hold this together. Um, they're quite small machine screws, but they're, they're going into threaded aluminum. It's a very secure, uh, very secure connection. So, what I'm going to do first is put the Loctite, put a drop into each of these holes. Then we take the 5200, insert this into the hole. Tell me how it feels. It's it's quite stiff. There we go. You can see where the the uh, the uh, 5200 has started to come into the screw holes here. So that means we're good. It means it's in the channels. Right? Yes, it's already squeezed through the channels. Now. We can insert the screws. Feeding the, the next extrusion, we feed it on from the bottom of the cable. plastic parts that help to uh, support the, the aluminum part make it fit snugly inside the extrusion. So what we do is we take this part here, it's got a couple of little, little uh, uh, hooks on it, fit that into there, then this side snaps in underneath. Okay, and then I start, get the thing started. Okay. Then one of these plastic pieces fits there. I hold this end down so it can't slide back. And there we go. There's the two screw holes. Once again, I put a little bit of Loctite in each one. syringe with the 5200 there we go we can see it we can see it starting to creep on the each sides of the each each side of the hole there it means that the the material has gone underneath that one plastic piece and is doing a nice job of securing the aluminum extrusion, the aluminum uh, connector to the extrusion.
So this is the furling unit for the reacher. It doesn't really support the mast. It's just another extreme, another roller furler for the for the reacher. The one behind me, uh, you may be able to. It's hard to tell, but it, that's actually a much heavier uh, unit. Can take and, and the and the cable going through it, the stainless cable, is much stronger. So that it's it's actually that's the one that's actually supporting the mast, uh, and also the, the small jib, which can come under a much higher loading than the reacher. On the screws in securely. Wipe off the excess 5200 and lock tight. Keep things neat. You can see this section that I just did a few minutes ago. Now you can see more of the 5200 has started to uh, ooze out. What we want to do is go back, go back now, and and uh, clean it up again before it hardens. Um, if we leave any anything like that standing proud, it's going to interfere with the upper swivel uh, going up and down. We'll do this and then the final thing we'll do after it's had a chance to set up a bit is we'll give the whole unit a wipe down with uh, a low boiling solvent like lacquer thinner to just clean off any of the last residue and have a nice shiny clean uh, surface again. Okay. We've got the spreader bar in. We have the lower shroud uh, fed into the base, into, into the root of the lower spreader bar. Okay. Now we're going to slide the starboard lower spreader over the spreader bar. I'm going to put the clevis pins in to secure it. Taking off the ends of the of the spreader here to put the shroud through it. Good. Now this goes on here like this. All right. Just tell me that it's a cup. This is a cup to adjust to make the diameter. Of this, of this fitting here, uh, this ball fitting, secure in this machined uh, spot for it. So I lower the, the wire in, and you can see now uh, this is all flush. Uh -huh. Okay, Jeff, you can lower that okay, down again. We yep, we're good. Okay. Great. Uh, I'm going to start fitting the intermediate shrouds on the starboard side of the mast, or the intermediate shroud. We've got the uh, stem ball fitting here and then the adjuster here to, to make it fit the, uh, the uh, recess. We feed it through and pull it back and you can see again it's uh, very nice and it, and it can rotate, it can change, it can, it can adjust so the wire doesn't get fatigued. Uh, now the, the intermediate shroud, its primary purpose is to keep the, the center of the mast uh, from from moving laterally to keep it all keep the keep the line and keep the mast in column uh, port and starboard your uppers are the most important then the lowers then the intermediates and they're tensioned accordingly the uppers take the most tension the lowers take the second highest tension and the intermediates are much lighter and you can see it's a skinnier line skinnier wire and they use less tension because again they're just a Keep the middle of the mast from from going sideways. Keep it in column. All right. This is the the upper shroud, also known as the cap shroud. It's going through this fitting here. Uh, we'll be fastening it and then putting a, a anti-chafe cover to protect the sails. Um, you got to tell me it's at. This is forward. Oh. This forward. is actually on the forward part of the uh, at the most forward part of the uh, spreader. It'll be led to the most forward attachment point on the chain plate. This is the uh, upper, also known as the cap shroud. This is the upper, 
and we're leading this forward. Uh, there's three three mounting uh, three holes in the chain plate for the clever pins for the for the uh, uh, three different shrouds: the upper, the intermediate, and the lower. The upper goes furthest forward. The intermediate goes in the middle, and the lower goes aft. This one's yes. not going to have another shroud. Uh, since we're down here, uh, the, the upper is the only one that we've, we've got lead at this point. When we get to the lower, we'll have an upper and the intermediate going through at that time. The lower spreader, uh, again, we're leading the upper shroud through the forward slot here. And the intermediate shroud now that supports the middle panel of the, of the, the center panel of the uh, mast uh, is leading, leading through the aft slot. These are called T-ball ends. And you can see the, the shape of the receptacle here. And the idea is it can go in sideways. You turn it thusly, and it can't come out. I mean, it would have to turn almost 90 degrees. These are the upper shrouds. Uh, we're also, they're also known as cap shrouds. These are the most. These are the uppermost uh, shrouds that, that hold the mast from tipping, going off sideways. This is the most the, stress. Yes, the shrouds. The shrouds control the boat, the mast laterally, then your head stay and back stay adjust it fore and aft. 